Everybody, it's Vic Dust. Time to lead and run here the Binding of Isaac Victor Repentance series. Happy Wednesday, Mosh Pit. I hope your midweek's gone off to a great start. I know mine has because we had another video across 3,000 likes. Which now puts us at 248 over 270. Thank you all very much. We're now only 22 away from TM Trainer Month, which is going to be an absolute hilarious ride all the way through whatever month we end up completing it. And uh, I guess, again, Mosh Pit Pet Week just keeps on continuing here. This time sent in by Vegetable Muffin 1286 out there was just me and Chibi enjoying a regularly scheduled program. She loves her Sinvicta, and she does look like a very sweet girl. And I also like that she likes greed runs because, well, that's not what we're doing today, but I do like playing greed runs. Thank you very much, Vegetable Muffin, and everyone who upvoted that. Yeah, I mean, it's the week of mosh pits. Mosh mosh pets? Yeah, let's let's say the mosh pets. That's What in the world? Oh, I thought we were Black Jews for a second. I was like, wait a second. Uh, Papa Mike Tango 3, uh, Kilo Delta 9 Zulu. We've got just, just god awful tears rate. The, I mean, it's horrible. Like, this is almost as bad as yesterday, except like, we don't have any of the benefits of Sacred Heart. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. So we also have, uh, the Notched Axe. I can't believe we didn't take a hit there which we can use as a melee weapon as you see right here. And you know, if you know if our tears rate is down in the toilet, then we might as well we might as well be able to use something else, right? Um, this will eliminate the use of uh, or the need of us to use bombs in the early game anyway. Uh, we can get into the secret rooms, we can get into super secret rooms, kind of like that. Um, also starting with five keys, which is a little bit a little bit weird, but I'll take it. Some bombas. There you go. So as you see that the durability does does decrease every single time you use the notched axe and uh you know it, it's an item that i don't mind um it, it's something that you can definitely utilize to its fullest potential whenever you do have a crap start like this uh in terms of like tears rate and you never know right like you, you just you never know when it's going to come in handy you might find like a crawl space that leads to a black market that leads to this and that like it could be the missing string that you need to pull on to really unravel stuff Ooh. We get scapular. Now, scapular I do like a whole lot as uh, it is a very useful item for us to use for sacrifice rooms. You can do it basically endlessly um, as long as you're down to a, a half heart here. So we also start with camo undies, which if, if, if you're wondering where that huge, huge boost of damage is coming from at the very beginning, uh, whenever we open here, we come out of our camouflage. That is from camo undies. Oh, my God. I think I had notched axe. Okay, so now goes the now goes the pickaxe, and that's fine. Yeah, that was way faster than us having to like sit here and shoot it. Uh, we do get uh, cat of nine tails, which is great, and yeah, I think we just head on down. Not terrible, but man, we need some tears rates. Definitely need some tears rates here. So we go on to last week's question of the episode. What are your thoughts on Cliff of Balance? Have you ever used it for the HP farming method like we did in that episode? Have you ever seen it before? And uh, surprisingly, not a lot of people have, have seen it a whole lot. Uh, the most upvoted comment came from uh, the Hungry Mammoth, who said the best economy item honestly eases the stress about pickups. 10-10 item will take on site early mid-game. About late game, it's about 70-30. Depends on the build and other options. Yeah, it's the Glyph of Balance is one of those kind of breakout items that, you know, I didn't, I admittedly didn't give a whole lot of attention to because I didn't quite understand how it worked. Um, surprise, surprise, there's there's some items out there that still exist that I'm not exactly sure how it works. I'm looking at you, Ares. Um, but now that we do, though, man, Glyph of Balance would definitely be 100% appreciated on a run, especially like this, where we can maybe use it to get some HP farming, get some keys. See, if we're right there, I switch to the notched axe just in case if we get uh, an enemy that gets too close, we can at least defend ourselves somewhat. We're definitely going to use it for clusters. It's a nice AoE cleave almost. Like, it turns Isaac into almost like an ARPG, and I kind of like it. Uh, second most of a comment came in from DNA4063, who said, Heck yeah, absolutely love the sac room sanguine bond potential with that combo, especially having the wafer. It makes it extra spicy. And yeah, I what I wouldn't do for the wafer on a run like this, especially with scapular... Um, giving us, uh, you know, the full potential to to really, really push the amount of uh, the amount of well, value that we can get out of our HP. And right now, we don't have any value because, well, we don't have the wafer. We do have scapular, which is good. Um, I'm going to save a little bit of the 
of the notched axe here for maybe getting to the secret room. I mean, we what's not uh, another a uh, kind of a secondary benefit of the notched axe is that it's it allows you to kind of stockpile your bombs uh, for boss fights in case of you happen to run into like a bad situation where you can't uh, get any sort of uh, DPS upgrades anytime soon. You know, you can use the bombs kind of like we did against against Black Dingle and uh, be able to to really push the you, you can you can really push like the envelope in terms of like what you can use for offense when you have more bombs. But like it's it becomes a secondary a secondary form of of, of offensive capabilities. And the notched axe enables that because it allows you to save those bombs whether you instead of you using them for like, you know, secret rooms and uh and uh, tinted rocks and stuff, you can now use them for offensive pur purposes, which so sort of help prop you up offensively than uh, the knot. We could use the notched axe in there, but that's a tricky, tricky little dodge right there. I'm not gonna lie. Of course, this is one of those runs where we would absolute, absolutely love rock bottom. I'm gonna take starter deck here. You can also use the uh, camo undies to destroy keepers. You just saw me do right there, uh, which is another little lesser known, lesser known fact about uh, about camo undies. I was really hoping there's gonna be a soul heart or something in there, but you're not that lucky. Um, try to take a stab at where the secret room is. Hey, there it is. And boy, howdy, what a secret room it is. Okay, well I take that back. We did get a soul heart. It's more than we got out of the shop. Um, that allowed us to at least go into the curse room. So that plus the strength card means that we can take a devil deal. It's going to be a little bit dicey, though, with us only being on basically one half HP after we're done picking up something, maybe possibly two. Um, we will come back for the strength card. I'm glad to have that. And just checking for the super secret room. I knew I should have known it wasn't there. Maybe it's over here. Yeah. Doorstop. I actually love doorstop. Uh, in most cases where it allows you to just kind of just step backwards if you've gone into a dead end, which, I mean, we, we're we not known for dead ends or anything. Like, let's not get crazy now. But should we happen to find that odd, rare dead end, yeah, we're, we'll be able to back out without without too much worry. There you go. We do mercifully get a nice tears upgrade here with divorce papers. Uh, I do like the I do like the, the mysterious paper, but I still rather have... Um, I would so much rather have the uh, doorstop. We're going to use the strength card and we're going to take Dark Prince's crown here. Because it is going to activate with us having having filled that bone heart. And then we're going to back out over here to get the world card. And then we'll head on down. So things are starting to look a little up, but we still need lots of help. And last but not least, on the third most upvoted comment came from Ronnie J. Uh, Ronnie said, I never really thought of using it as for HP as, until its breakout video a while back. Now it's near the top of my item tier list. And yeah, that, it's the the amount of value that, dar that um, not Dark Prince's Crown, but that uh, the Glyph of Balance can give you is unmatched potential. Once you understand how to use it. It, is, it becomes invaluable. I don't know what I was thinking there. I thought that for sure that we were going to be able to, like, AOE that, but I should have known better because the 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 AOE little puff ball that you do from uh, from Camel Undies is not that significant. Like, it's not like a wait what type scenario. Now, what would be cool is if it actually did like sort of a, a blood rights or. Um, uh, if it did like a sharp straw effect where it did indeed attack the entire uh, room instead of just one. Instead of like a little area, I mean. Um, I don't, Trinket Smelter, I mean, it's just, it's not worth bombing the, the donation machine for, in my opinion. Just taking a real quick swipe here, looking for the super secret room. Uh, we do have a soul heart protecting our half red heart. I would much rather use this this Queen of Hearts for a sacrifice room. Um, this is going to be a little bit tricky here. Okay, first off, let's drop let's drop everything over here. 
do this first so we don't accidentally like pick up something we don't want. Okay, so two of clubs, gonna double our bombs, kind of whatever. Game breaking bug, you're kind of making this a little, little dicey. And I'm not gonna use the mod to cheat here to see what that was. Go through the ropes here. So we have a queen of hearts and strength card, which is fine. Literally no reason for us to be in that room, so I'm just not going to. The reason why I'm using a bomb here and not using the uh, the AOE from um, from Camo Undies is because I wanted to bomb the uh, slot machine. There we go. And as you can see here, you can use the notched axe to pick up stuff, just like the Forgotten's Bone. I will take chocolate milk in this instance. Only because it just screw us. It did just screw us. Wow. Um, only because in this instance, I think that we, I don't know for sure if we're going to get any tears ups or not. I mean, I don't know for sure on any run, obviously, but you know, with, with dark Prince's crown activated, at least it's going to charge chocolate milk a lot faster than, than, you know, the not. The, it's just it just comes down to the the idea the the notion of tap firing that's just annoying to use for me anyway. What in the world? A breaking bug just re-rolled that enemy. I didn't know that you can you could even do that. I need to be careful with the door stop because if we end up backing out too far, we can get stuck in the doorway on a boss room, and that is not fun. And of course, we get a tears up. And, uh, yeah, we'll head on down. Okay. So here's the hoping that we... So now, now that we've taken chocolate milk, we've kind of taken the plunge here, as it were. Um, we need to start hoping that we get something like, say or eye or quad shot or anything that gives us a multi shot is what we're going to be looking for the most a game breaking bug you're you're killing me now that i know that game breaking bug can reroll enemies it is an absolute never take item ever again i mean like it's it the the, the last thing i want is the game re-rolling something into its favor and game breaking bug you know turning into the turning into the worst possible outcome is uh is not great I'm going to take magic skin here. I think that potentially we could we could see some some unique opportunity here. Would I take missing no? Absolutely freaking lutely. I would reroll this run in a heartbeat. Um would I take TM trainer? No. No, 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 no. No, let's not get crazy now. Um but if we ended up if we end up somehow getting a reroll ability through uh magic skin, then you know We'll we'll, we'll 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 take it as it comes and take the mom's wig. Now the thing about magic skin is that obviously it's going to take one of our HP containers away at the cost of or for the cost of us getting a guaranteed item from an item pedestal uh, in the whatever room of uh, of whatever loot table that we use it in. So if we use it in a secret room, we obviously gain a secret room item. Use it in a double deal, we gain a double deal item, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what I was trying to do. No secret room. Mine, there's an angel room. Yeah, it's not not great. So that took away our red heart container for essentially nothing. Um, and now on top of that, now that we've used magic skin, we are we are pot committed to having it, to keeping it. And that's the real problem with Magic Skin, unless if you get School Bag. If you get School Bag, then you don't have to worry about holding on to it because you can, you can hold on to it in the in the opposite. I mean, it, like you still you still have to hold on to it, which is really annoying. But at least you don't have to worry about it showing up every single time. And there's a seventy three percent deal with the devil. All right. So we have to go all the way to floor five before getting our next uh, devil deal. Pretty, pretty stoked about that. Okay. Well, at least we have to show the benefits of us having uh, having the door stop. 
Instead of us having to clear those annoying rooms, we can simply walk out. Yeah, I had no idea that game breaking bug could reroll enemies, but yeah, the more you know. And there, there will inevitably be some someone who's being like, "I remember this one time game breaking bug saved my run because it turned into a soul heart when I needed it." That's great. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm good for you. I'm glad that game breaking bug worked out one time out of the many, 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 many other times that it just doesn't do anything. Um, we almost got hit there because of game breaking bug, and that solidifies what I'm trying to talk about here. If it didn't reroll enemies, then I, I wouldn't have any complaints about it. But man, now that I know, brother, sister, no thank you. Potentially rerolling into something worse. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Leaving that up to the up to the devices of Isaac. Nah. Oak stone is not a great item. Um, I think that honestly, lodestone would be. I don't know what I would have, what I would much rather have. Lodestone or Strange Attractor? Probably Strange Attractor. Maybe. I don't know. Lodestone, Lodestone, like it can be okay, I guess. Not there. What am I doing? Yeah, I tell you what, Dad's ring doing a number on these enemies that are trying to spawn next to us. Tell you what. Okay, so let's finally see what we're going to get out of a devil deal here. And hopefully it's... I mean, I would take Brimstone for sure. And just... Just tap firing here. <laughs> going burst. Which is going to be nothing but... Uh, it's going to be nothing but uh, tarot cards because we have starter deck. Alrighty. And, yep. I knew it was coming. The guppy's eye. The cost of three soul hearts, essentially. Oh, boy. It's, uh, it's rough out here, coach. It's rough out here, Sarge. I mean, we're, we have to stick with, with magic skin. Otherwise, it's just going to keep popping up here. So maybe we'll get some help in the boss rush. All right. Yeah, we are we are almost honestly almost praying for Genesis or for missing no at this point. See game breaking bugs and see that what I need you to not do is turn into an enemy that turns into more enemies. So at this point, I think we have to go all in on the secret room plays here. I was hoping that we were going to get some kind of reroll pedestal in one of these. That's really where where magic magic skin can shine is by creating item pedestals when there's reroll pedestals. But yeah. We can definitely use some damage. We can use a lot of things in this run. It is is not great, especially when we keep getting these amazing item rooms like Abel and Abel. We're we are, we're in it. We are definitely in it. E deep in it, I would say. Four and a half volt. I mean it would give us a faster charge for magic skin. Um I really wish that we could use that pay to pay to win to use it in here. So, <laughs> yep, not looking not looking phenomenal on this run. Gonna say we are we're in lots of trouble here. Even if we didn't take chocolate milk, which at this point I don't know if chocolate milk is is harming or or hurting, or harming or helping us. 
Gotta be careful about dad's ring freezing stuff. Whatever you're not expecting it to freeze and keep on walking. Gonna go in the vault, but we are absolutely desperate at this point. So there's a there's a teleport to the devil deal right there. We can take we can take Guppy's tail. We gotta be very cautious of this uh of these spikes. So I don't want to teleport to the, to the devil deal right now because we have to get boss rush here. But honestly, like boss rush is like worrying about boss rush is almost secondary compared to what we're dealing with right now. We have to beat mom on essentially one and basically two hits. Otherwise we're dead. Now remember we have scapular. The scapular will save us for one hit. Yeah, turning that into a red blorb game breaking bug is like the worst thing that you could have done. We don't have a full charge, but maybe we'll get it against mom. Nice freeze there by dad's ring. I saw it coming down. I knew it as soon as that greed head spawned over there. So you saw scapula go off. <laughs> Gotta be better than that. <sighs> we can't even take brimstone. Even with the strength card, we can't take Brimstone. Oh, that sucks so much. We have a chance of getting back in there, but man, that does suck. The Tech 1. And I'll absolutely take Tech 1 here. Um, We need to go back in the vault and... Actually, no, you know what? We can get Brimstone if we get those two soul hearts and teleport back into the Devil Deal. That's the only way that that happens. So we can actually take Brimstone. Go home for Fortune Telling Machine. Yeah, we're going to have to do some serious, serious gaming here. So tech one really helps. Um, it is going to enable us to really, it's going to enable us to stay back as far as possible. And when we get brimstone, that's going to help even more, obviously, because first off, I don't have to worry about charge firing anymore. And secondly, it's going to get a, an actual nice DPS boost here from chocolate milk. If we, and this is something that people always tell me, and it's, it's something that I've done before in the past. And like, it's been so long since I've done it. It actually like, is one of the things I've forgotten about. But if you hold chocolate milk down at the time of you taking brimstone, brimstone retains the damage upgrade from it being fully charged. Oh, you dirt bag. No, I don't I don't trust I don't trust physics with this. Okay. So we we can get brimstone with this and the strength card. I might be saying, how did you know that we were going to teleport like that? Because the chest was clear. There was nothing in there, according to Guppy's eye, which is, again, that's a big, that is a big play there. Now, of course, me being, me saying that, I literally just, literally just talked about how you have to charge your chocolate milk before taking Brimstone, and I didn't do it. But as you see here, we're still gaining tons and tons and tons of damage, no matter what. Um, okay, hang on now. Hang on now. We have a sacrifice room. We're not out of this yet. So Scapular will infinitely proc in this room as long as we walk out and walk back in. This potentially could be huge for us here. But we we absolutely need... We absolutely need... Uh, the game to pat with seven soul hearts. If we if we get the soul hearts, then it's over. We're, we're totally fine. We get redemption, which does 
No, nothing for us here. Move these bombs away. We have to make sure that we have the yellow glow of scapular. And we get the soul hearts. Oh man, that is a that is a weight. A weight off the shoulders. So scapular really, really, really coming in clutch there. Shade. We're seeing the little the little little baby shots versus the mega charge shots that we can get here with brimstone. Again, the supercharged the supercharged chocolate milk shots can be very, very good. Um we just need more, like, we still need, we still need things, but we're on the way up, baby. I will say that us getting a redemption, it's not necessarily negligible. Um, it allows us to, it, it basically allows us to get more damage, which is always great for Brimstone, no matter what. We get something for it, right? But I wouldn't say it's the end-all, be-all, most amazing devil deal or angel deal item that you can get. So essentially what all it does is basically gives you a damage upgrade, a permanent damage upgrade, if you reject a devil deal on the floor. So if you walk in and you don't take anything, just walk out. That includes touching chests, by the way. If you, if you, don't, if you don't touch a red chest or anything in the devil deal, then you will get the bonus. Wow. Okay, there we go. That is uh, that's some mega value there from Doorstop. How does he do it? Honestly, what I would like right now is just some friggin' movement speed, brother. Normally, I would say the secret room is here, but south of here, but it's not. Which is really odd, because that's a really high percentage wall right there. HP upgrade is going to be imperative for our damage here, thanks to uh, Dark Prince's crown. Going to help out with the charging of Brimstone as well. And I think we've moved past the use of of um, Magic Skin. So at the end of the day, did Magic Skin help? No, no, oh, no, it did not. Uh, but it, it certainly tried, and that's all we can expect. I'd say the biggest time player, honestly. Well, no, I take that back. I, I take it back. Before you, before, no, no, stop, stop. Before you start yelling at me and saying, oh, hang on a second now, you forgot about Guppy's eye. I just remembered, yes. Magic Skin technically did help us out with Guppy's eye. Um, we would not have gotten that without it, which then led us to getting Brimstone, which then allowed us to be a little bit safer. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit safer. So in conjunction with everything else, yes, Magic Skin actually did help us. So I take that back. I apologize, Magic Skin. You did something useful. And still may do something useful if we get a reroll pedestal in the secret room. We got to be careful about our key usage because we do have Guppy's tail. 85% um, deal with the devil. For some reason, call me kooky, call me crazy. I feel like we're still going to miss it. I don't know why. Something, something's, something's telling me that it's uh, that we're still gonna miss it. Maybe it's just because I know my luck, but I just I get the I'm getting the gitchy. I'm getting the feeling of of us knowing that we're not going to be able to get the devil deal here. I don't know why. Nice damage there with the high priestess card. Oh, I actually got it. Well, I'm glad you proved me wrong. Get the pact. This is going to ruin uh, redemption, but I don't care about that. The pact is a huge, huge damage help for us. I have reinstalled EVE Online, by the way. Um, a couple people did reach out, and I plan on reaching out. And, uh, and contacting them 
Um, I haven't gotten, at the time of this recording, I've not gotten a chance to play, though. I re reinstalled it, but the, at the time of this recording, the servers went down literally two minutes after I reinstalled. So, yeah. And Eve, Eve does have a weekly, um, or at least a bi-weekly maintenance. I don't, I don't honestly remember the, the maintenance days, but... I'm looking forward to jumping back in because, man, I miss, I miss playing Eve. And I don't know how much time I'll spend in it. Like the last time, the last time I had a little resurgence of Eve, um, it was, uh, it lasted for about a month and then I stopped playing it again. No particular reason. It's just like, you know, you just, I don't know, you just don't feel like playing. <laughs> I, let me, I'll put it this way. I would be more invested in playing Eve if I had a corporation to do stuff with on your own. I still don't mind playing on my own just cause like that's in a weird way. That's like kind of how I prefer to play online games, but I like being online cause I like inter interacting with people and trading and that sort of thing too. So that's my, that's my favorite thing to do. That's the reason why I didn't reinstall or I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't wait for last epoch to kind of get stuff done and, and play the off offline mode instead. Cause like, that's not how I want to play the game. I enjoy the economy aspect, and Eve is the ultimate economy simulator, and I love it. And certainly watching Dune Part 2 made me want to play Eve. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I, on my, on second, on like the second review in my mind after seeing Part 2, I know I talked about it in like, not a negative aspect, I was just kind of mid on it, on Part 2, but... Having gone back and rewatched part one of the remake, the 2021 remake, um, or 2022, I, I don't remember what year. It was the one with Jason Momoa. Having watched that one, I have a better appreciation of what part two did. And uh, I do like it a little bit more now. So I think I gave it like a six or something like that. I'd up it to like a, probably a seven and a half. It's a, it's a good, it's a good sci-fi, sci-fi flick. I still don't think it's like the best thing ever, but it was... It's definitely a lot better than than the first impressions left me with um, after the movie. I'd probably have to go see part two again in order to really kind of appreciate like you know what every like all the themes like there's a lot of stuff that I missed from watching part one. Um, oh yeah, and I I forgot to mention when I talked about it. Um, so it was brought to my attention thanks to thanks to the Twitch mosh pit. They're like, hey, because I, I mentioned how I was having a problem understanding what they were saying in part one. Part of it was the mix and part of it was because they're just spouting names that just mean nothing to me because I never read any of the books. And somebody in the Twitch mosh pit mentioned that you can actually get like a subtitle like stick or pole or something and hold it in front of you while you're sitting down or putting the cup holder. And it actually displays the it actually displays like the um the subtitles for you for for new movies and I, I was like no way that's that's it's got to be fake right right but so like right before right before I, we ended up seeing the movie i i asked the uh the person there who actually turned out to be the manager which i didn't realize at the time of course but um i asked her i was like hey do you have one of those like subtitle things like you know i don't have really problem hearing or anything it's just it's hard for me to understand what what they what they're saying in this movie She's like, oh yeah, 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 no problem. And I was like, really? And uh, and yeah, and I'm like, wow, this is this is the this is the confirmation of a, of an existing thing that I never knew was a thing until like a week ago. And now, like, here it is. It's in my hands. And it was like the most amazing piece of technology ever. I was like, what the heck? I just turned it on, and I guess that they I guess they prompt it, or they they preload like whatever movie it's about to go into, and then you know. Timing is like a subtitle, a time subtitles is not, is not new technology. I had just never seen it before in a movie theater. And, uh, and I was like, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, wow, it's, you know, I don't mind reading subtitles. I know a lot, of, I know some people really hate reading subtitles um, when they're just trying to watch a movie, but I don't mind it. That, that comes from just watching anime, but um, I was, I was thoroughly impressed. Now, one thing I will say about part two is that I actually didn't need the subtitles after all because the mix was so much better on part two than it was part one um and it also helped that i knew like you know what the bene Gesserits are or you know what like like what arrakis is or the harkonnens like so like that helped out a lot with me having seen part one and now knowing what the heck they were saying um but the audio mix was absolutely 100 percent improved over part one 
Um, you know, the mix was just louder. They, the words were less muffled by the actors and actresses. So, but, you know, going back and watching part one now, which I think is on HBO Max currently, um, it, it gave me a new appreciation for, for the Dune franchise. Which in turn led me to want to play EVE Online. So see, we've, we've come for full circle. It's professional commentary 101 right there. My God, we finally get an HP upgrade here. I did take Almond Milk because, I, I again, I'm tired of, of just charging stuff, even if it is Brimstone. Okay. And uh, boy, howdy. We are getting some mileage out of our doorstop. But Almond Milk, obviously, it's, just a, it's a constant Brimstone beam. And, uh, you know, at higher levels, it does deal a very good amount of damage. Getting Quince also helps out quite a bit. We've got Purity, which is going to give us some kind of some kind of uh, stat up. Of course, the last three times we've been hit, I believe, it's been nothing but the range up, which doesn't really matter too much for Brimstone as it has unlimited range, but there you go. So thank you for watching, everyone. It was uh, quite the struggle bus up until the very end. I am uh, going to be firing these, or at least attempting to fire these these rocket in the jars here. It's like it's not. It's like almond milk is messing with the, like sometimes Isaac was placing the the bombs and sometimes he wasn't. So, yeah, you know. And I gotta say, shout out to thank thank you Magic Skin for making it possible because we we would not have gotten Brimstone. It, it's just like it's one of those things in Isaac that you you don't think about a whole lot about the little threads. And again, I cr I credit Ryan for all that. We're talking about little threads, little 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 snags in the yarn that you start pulling and pulling and pulling, and all of a sudden all your problems become untangled and everything's crystal clear. And we would not have gotten Guppy's eye had it not been for magic skin if it also wasn't for like the decision to make to take magic skin and desperation move because our stats were so bad, because we're looking for a reroll, and that ultimately led us to getting the win because ultimately we got brimstone. And without brimstone, I don't know what that run looks like, but it doesn't look good. So Good run all overall. I was I will say I'm I'm thoroughly impressed with with how everything turned out. So thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you click the like button, leave a comment down below. Your question of the episode today is going to be what are your thoughts on magic skin? Is it worth it? Is it not? Do you only take it whenever you have school bag? Post them in the comments down below. The top three most upvoted comments get read. And I'll be changing up the, the format to the questions of the episode very soon, probably starting next week. Stay tuned for that one. But for right now, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. And as always, I will see you all next time. Until then, so long, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. Like thanks to pages of mine like Sean Cooper, Dina, and Alvin Sheldon. If you'd like to have your name read at the end of an Isaac episode, check out my Patreon campaign, which you can find at patreon.com slash Invicta.